Before we dive into the episode, I want to ask you something. How would it feel to be able to get up each morning knowing that you call the shots? That you can live and work when, where, how, and with whom you choose? That you get to reap all the benefits of your own talent and expertise and are no longer slaving for someone else's dream, but living your own? You get all this and more with a digital business. And if you'd love to start one but have no idea where to begin, then I have something just for you. I've created a free resource called the Digital Business Quick Start Guide. By downloading this guide, you'll discover my simple digital business launch formula that will help you design your business fundamentals and learn what you need to do next to get your business launched fast. So head on over to nicolohara.com forward slash quick start hyphen guide, or you'll find the link in the show notes to download your guide now and get started on your way to finding the freedom and success only a digital business can give you. Do it now. Don't waste another second of your time that you could be planning your digital business launch. Your future self will thank you. Now go and enjoy the episode. Believe me, no matter how certain you are now that you want to change your career, there will be dark moments where you'll doubt yourself and your career change plans. And it will seem so much easier to just throw in the towel and stick with what you know. Your brain naturally wants to protect you and will try to keep you safe in the normal life and job you already have. So it will send out its defensive army of reasons why you should not be doing what you're doing. You know what I mean. You've heard them in your head before. Things like, you've too much to lose. Why would you be successful? What makes you so special? You're not good enough at it to do what you love as a career. Other people will think you're crazy. It's too just too late in your life. It's going to be so hard to do, why put yourself through it? Or the classic, you're too young or you're too old. I can tell you this is totally normal. Once the excitement and the enthusiasm of your decision to change career and creating your plan to make it happen wears off and real life kicks in, it's really common to go through some doubts. So in this episode, I'm sharing five ways that will help you to combat any problems or doubts that turn up as you put your career change plan into action. Are you ready? Then let's get started. I'm Nicola O'Hara, and I made the leap from a successful corporate career as a leader in learning, development, and recruitment to launch my dream business and haven't looked back. Every week, we'll bring you step-by-step strategies, essential knowledge and tools, and share inspirational stories and practical tips so you are ready to take your leap to a career and life you love. This is the Powering Your Passion podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 43. Now, I talk a lot on this podcast about uncovering your passion and purpose that will bring you the career and life you want, and also how you can create a strategy and plan to make it happen. But then you need to act on that plan, usually alongside the job you already have. And depending on how long you've given yourself, it could be six weeks, six months, or even six years before you actually escape your corporate job and make your dream career happen. And I'm not going to lie to you, you won't be full of drive, optimism and excitement all that time. Think about if you're going to go on a long trek over a hilly terrain. In the start, you're excited, full of energy and buoyed up with enthusiasm for the journey ahead. But then halfway through, as you begin to tire, the road ahead is hilly and twisting. Maybe it gets cold. The terrain could be steeper than you thought it was going to be and your destination seems very far away. And obviously doubts will begin to creep in. You wonder if you should just take the easy path back to the start. After all, you really need to complete the challenge. No one really expects you to complete it, did they? And it would be safer and easier just to go back, wouldn't it? So what would you do ahead of that trek? You make sure you have the support, equipment and tools to get you through it. You'll have energy bars and drinks for when you're tired. You make sure to make the trip with other people so you can motivate and support each other. You'll bring extra warm clothes for when it's cold and tools to help you climb out of the steep bits. You get what I'm saying. You make sure that before you set out, you're prepared for every eventuality. And it's the same When you're setting out on your career change journey, you need to prepare and tool up in advance. 
so you can face anything that comes your way. So here are my five tips to keep you motivated, energized and on track while you work towards your dream career and life. First up is the one thing I wish I had done earlier when I was changing career, and that is find your tribe. I thought I could go alone, but you really need people around you that will be your cheerleaders and help you celebrate when you reach your milestones and also give you advice, support and motivation when you're doubting yourself and your plans. So find and surround yourself with people who are on the same career change journey so they can empathize with you where you're at or people who are ahead of you on the same journey and that can mentor you and share their experiences. You also need to have people to learn from, like thought leaders or influencers who know more about than you about how to change career and make it a success. And finally, a great option is to have a career coach. I wish I had found one sooner, as having that person to hold you accountable and help you deal with all the mindset issues you can face is really game changing. But if you can't afford or don't want to invest in a one to one coach, then look for group coaching opportunities where the cost is split between a few people who are going to be coached or join a paid membership which is lower costs but you'll be connected with people in a similar stage to you and you'll get tools and techniques on how to keep motivated and take action and tools and techniques on how to keep motivated and take action will be shared with you a more DIY option as it were. I really can't oversell this point having the right people around you is essential your friends and family well may well be really supportive but they don't know what it's like to do what you're doing, so it can feel quite lonely trying to make the leap alone. If you want more ideas on how to find people that can support you, then check out episode 14, Find Your Tribe, that will motivate and inspire you to career success after finishing this episode. Okay, next up is talk to people about your plans. There's no point in having a plan to change careers if you don't tell anybody about it. I know you may be nervous it won't happen or it'll be delayed and then you'll be embarrassed in front of your friends and family, but you have to make this real. If it's something that people know about, it makes you accountable. You know that people will be expecting for things to change, for you to move forward with your plans. So it's a whole lot harder to let them slip or to decide not to go ahead because of fear, doubt or just having so much to do. So what if it doesn't happen exactly as you plan and you have to backtrack a bit? I know what it's like not achieving what you say you are going to. I've been talking and talking about wanting to lead the corporate world for a good 10 years before I actually did. I told everyone that one day I'd leave and start my own business, that I just needed a few more years in in the day job in corporate. It was only when I had a few life-changing moments that happened that I actually made a plan and made my career change happen. When I told my friends I was finally leaving, I'm sure they thought it was another incident of Nick crying wolf saying that she would leave and not actually doing it. But who cares? I did it and it was on my own terms when the time was right for me. But did knowing that other people expected me to go out on my own one day help motivate me? Yes, absolutely it did. It kept that promise to myself to the very front of my mind and it was never ever a question if I would do it, it was just when. So tell your friends and family about your plans. Not in a I may do this one day way, But I'm doing this. I'm doing this in six months or 12 months or five years or whatever your timeline is that you decided on. If you're confident and clear about what you want to do, they will support you. And even if they don't, you'll know that it's going to happen. It's really inspiring and momentous to set your intentions verbally. By speaking about them, you are sending a message out into the world that it will happen. I truly believe that by saying something will happen, you're sending out a positive energy vibe that will manifest a positive response. Obviously, you can't just do that and then sit back and do nothing and expect to get a sudden new career offer. But words have power. And by stating what you want to achieve out loud gives it extra force and strength. There is research that says that by setting out your intentions verbally or in writing, you are 42% more likely to follow through and achieve them. A pretty good result, right? So don't be shy. Go out there and tell your friends and family what you want to do. Don't keep it a secret. Okay, next up is to celebrate your achievements. So I'm talking about celebrating your small achievements along the way, as well as the larger things that you, you, larger goals that you hit. If you've created a project plan to help you make your escape to a new career happen, 
you'll have set milestones or mini goals in that plan. So celebrate when you reach them. This is where your supporting tribe will come in as they will really get why you're so excited to have reached a small goal and will want to celebrate with you. So when you've completed that course you needed to take, or you've saved the amount of money you need to make your escape possible, or you've written your new CV, or you've joined a new Facebook group of career changers, make it a big deal. You're closer than ever before to loving what you do every day, to having more time with your family, or to making a difference in the world. Whatever your goal is, you're closer to it. So buy yourself a little gift. Have a glass of champagne with your friends, or just give yourself a well-earned day off. Whatever makes you feel like a winner, go for it. Number three, keep reminding yourself why you want to change career. This one is so important. You need to keep reminders of why you're making this change in front of your face every day. You'll have lots of reasons of why you want to move on to a new career. That could be because you want fulfillment that comes with working with your passion, or maybe you want to have a job that allows you to spend more time with your family, or Perhaps you want a whole lifestyle change and a new career will help facilitate that. When you make the decision to go for this new career and the life that it brings you, you'll have all the reasons spinning in your mind. They give you the motivation and the strength to do the work to make the escape happen. But like anything, if you don't remind yourself of what you're aiming for and why on a regular basis, those reasons can fade in your mind and the more pragmatic daily concerns can take over. And you start thinking, "Mm, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. So you need to find ways to keep reminding yourself what it's all for, why you're taking the time on top of your job to find your route away from your current path and to a new future. So set your phone screensaver with something to motivate you. It can be words like maybe your next goal or pictures like a place you want to live or something you want to get if you have lifestyle financial goals. Or it could be a photo of a business card with your what your titles will be in your new career. So for me, I would have put Nicola O'Hara, entrepreneur or podcaster or business owner or maybe all three. Or it simply could be a photo of your family if your aim is to spend more time with them. Whatever will motivate you, make sure that you're reminded every time you pick up your phone. And if you don't want colleagues to see, then maybe you can be a little bit more subtle, but do make it meaningful. Another thing you can do is to set reminders for yourself. These can be for your bigger goals. So, for example, when you want to have handed in your notice by or smaller milestones, like when you set yourself up as a sole trader or when you finish the course that will allow you to start applying for roles in your new career specialism. You can also set reminders for those blocks of time in your week when you've committed to work on your career change project. Now, I always recommend using a project management management system for your career change project because you can set up reminders in this and assign goals for yourself and keep track of all your career change just like you would any project you work on in the corporate world. I personally use Asana but there are a lot of systems out there so google it, check out and see if you can find one that suits you. The next one people can get a bit uncomfortable with because it seems a bit fluffy but there is evidence to suggest that visual reminders are very effective in helping you achieve success. So I really recommend creating a vision board to hang on your wall in a prominent place so you can see it every day. A vision board is a collection of images or words that represent your goals. You can use photos or cut out images of magazines or even draw or paint pictures if you're artistically minded that reflect what you're aiming for. But if having something so visible to everyone is uncomfortable, then instead have a vision book, you know, like a scrapbook. You can look at it daily or on a weekly basis. Just make sure not to leave it in a drawer or in a bookcase. Put it where you will be reminded to look at it, like on your bedside table or a coffee table where you you sit to relax. And if you're thinking, nah, I couldn't be bothered putting some pretty pictures together, then remember your brain can't differentiate between the real physical experience of doing something and your imagination. If you regularly visualise a future idea, it will become a reality for your brain then your brain will form new neural pathways and begin to create deliberate behaviours that will help you achieve that vision, like coming up with more innovative ideas to help you achieve the goals you've pictured on your board. So creating a vision board has got to be worth a shot, right? Last than this, you could write out all your reasons in a letter to yourself and every morning, maybe with that first cup of coffee, have a read 
and get excited about what you're on your way to achieving. Or there's another great thing you could do, which I did as part of a course I took. We all wrote letters to our future selves to say why we wanted to do what we were doing, where we hoped to be in three months' time, and what we hoped to have achieved by then. And then gave them to the course provider who then sent them back to us after three months by email. It was all done very confidentially through a website. There's something so powerful and honestly a little bit emotional in reading in your own words what you want for yourself, your hopes and dreams for the future, a future you're already in when you read them. So give it a try. You don't need the fancy software. Just put all you want to say in an email and send it on delay to yourself for one or two months time. That email could be a great thing to receive when you most need it. Finally, keep focused on one goal at a time and be patient. When you want something so much, it's natural to feel impatient and want it to happen right now. So when you're planning and working towards your career change, it can be frustrating not to be there already. You want to be in that future and have that new career in life now. I get it, particularly when you're miserable in your current career. But even if you're okay with what you're doing now, it can be tempting to always want to be at the finish line when you've only just got off the starting blocks. Just remember that everything you're doing is leading up to that end goal, even if it doesn't feel like it yet. Everything you learn, every system you get to grips with, every step you take towards your goal is all building towards that new life that you want. Creating positive and useful habits are so important in keeping you focused and able to actually find the time to work on your career change project. James Clear, in his book Atomic Habits, talks about how habits are the compound interests of self-improvement. He explains this by saying, the same way that money multiplies through compound interests, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. They seem to make little difference on any given day and yet the the impact that they deliver over months and years can be enormous. It's only when looking back two, five or perhaps even ten years later that the value of good habits and the cost of bad ones become strikingly apparent. So if you focus on creating habits that will allow you to have the time to work towards your career move, you'll see the results in time. The same can be said for your actions. If you regularly do a small amount of work towards making your new career happen, focusing on one stage at a time, all those actions will ultimately lead up to that amazing moment when you walk out of your corporate job or the last time and towards your new exciting career or business. And when you're finally at the finish line, I promise you, it would all happen really quite quickly. It's like the story of the um, stone cutter who hit a stone a hundred times and then on the 101st time it finally split. It's not the 101st hit that did it, it was all the 100 before it which allowed that final stroke to break through. So all your work will be worth it and you can enjoy that final hit when everything else falls into place. I know for me, it felt like forever when I was working towards my move. Seriously, it felt like I would never, ever get there. But it didn't seem so long when I actually left and I looked back on all I'd done and it was definitely all worth it. Okay, I've spoken about quite a few things here, so let's recap. Once you know what passion you want to work with every day and have planned for how you'll make it happen, you have to make sure you know what you'll do to help yourself when you hit any ups and downs and have the tools in your armory to fight any doubts or regrets you may have. Get the right people around you who can support, mentor, guide and motivate you to believe in your plan and that it will get you where you want to be. Talk about your plans, bring them to life, make them so real there's no way they're not going to happen. They are reality, not fantasy. Celebrate your achievements. Every step you make towards that dream career is amazing. You're closer than you've ever been to making it happen, so mark it in some way. Regularly remind yourself why you want to do this in the first place. It's not a small or an easy decision to change your life by diving into a new career. So I'm sure you have some big and important reasons of why you want to do it. So don't let them get ignored or swept aside because you get uneasy. Keep images of what you want close. Write them down so you can look at them every day and set reminders to keep you on track. And finally, keep focused and be patient. You will get there, but take it step by step and create habits that will help you. The bottom line is, changing career is 100% possible. 
whatever your age or wherever you are in your career. But even if you have a passion, you are dying to turn into a career and you have a clear purpose and plan, it will still take some, take some time to reach that moment when you can resign and move on. So you have to prepare to celebrate your many successes and know how to get yourself out of any low points. The difference between a successful career changer and one that never makes it is their ability to deal with the time between deciding what they want to change and actually taking the leap. The successful career changer is resilient, is positive. They believe in what they want to do and also understand that they will have down days. How they react to those times when it all sounds like a bad idea really makes a difference. I've heard a lot of people say they want to change career to make more of their lives, to work with something more meaningful and where they're truly sharing their gifts with the world. Particularly after the pandemic, when we all put a magnifying glass up to our lives and many people realised they were not happy and wanted more. But most of those people will not make the change. They won't have the confidence, self-belief or drive to make it happen. So who will you be? Will you be the dreamer who always talks about wanting to do something different but never goes for it? Or will you be the one who turns their dreams into reality? Who is ready to do whatever it takes to make it happen? I think if you're listening to this podcast, you've already made the first step and are ready to go for it. Okay, that's it for this episode. Before you go, let me ask you a teeny favour. I really want as many people as possible who want to make their passion into a career to hear this podcast. So if you have enjoyed this episode and know anyone you think it would benefit to listen to it, then please send them the link I put in the episode description, which you'll find wherever you're listening to this podcast. Remember, you deserve to live your passion, so go for it. This is your time. Thank you so much for listening. And if you'd like to listen to more episodes, follow or subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google or Stitcher, or go to my website, nicolohara.com forward slash podcast.